That was On Jordan's Banks, The Baptist's Cry. Well, it feels that this year has given us more to cry about than be joyful for. Mother Teresa is alleged to have once said this. I used to pray that God would feed the hungry or do this or that. But now I pray that God will guide me to do whatever I'm supposed to do, what I can do, wherever I am. I used to pray for answers, but now I'm praying for strength. I used to believe that prayer changes things, but now I know that prayer changes us and we change things. Now, I don't know if she actually said that, but they are very wise words nonetheless. Good morning and welcome to our spiritual communion service on this, the third Sunday of Advent. And as such, much like Mothering Sunday, which falls in the middle of Lent, today is a rest day from the fasting which we are encouraged to do during Advent to help us prepare ourselves for the birth of the Saviour. The vestments many priests will be wearing today will be rose to mark this occasion and it's also known as Gaudete Sunday. The ancient people of God, the Jews, look forward to the coming of God's kingdom where there would be a new order of justice and righteousness. The early church saw that the kingdom had been anticipated and experienced through the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, but still prayed Maranatha, our Lord come. Looking forward to a second coming and the final consummation of all things. We light the third candle in our Advent wreath today to remember John the Baptist and all those messengers of the word of Christ who have paved the way. And so we pray. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, just and true. To you be praise and glory forever. Your prophet John the Baptist was witness to the truth as a burning and shining light. May we, your servants, rejoice in his light and so be led to witness to him who is the Lord of our coming kingdom. Jesus, our Saviour and King of the ages. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Well, now let's listen to Gaudete.
the Collect for the Third Sunday in Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight, for you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And our collect for church growth. God of mission, you alone bring growth to your church. Bring joy to our worship, understanding to hearing and passion to our praise, so we may grow in faith and love for you. For the sake of our life as a growing Christian community, send, we pray, your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions and power to our witness. Help our parishes to grow in spiritual commitment to you and in service to our local communities, that we might grow in numerical strength to live and to serve you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, now let's pray then for the coming of God's kingdom in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The second reading is taken from the fifth chapter of the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, beginning at the 16th verse. My brothers and sisters, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of the Lord. There is nothing new under heaven and on earth. We read the same thing often, just in a slightly different way. Today's gospel, for example, is very similar to that which we heard last Sunday. Last week, Mark had written it. Today, we hear from John. Rather comfortingly, they are so similar. Perhaps it's true, after all. Last week, we were met with the sense of urgency which Mark portrays throughout. Now, 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 just do it, drop everything and follow Jesus now. Whereas John presents us with food for thought in a much gentler way. When asked to clarify his identity, John the Baptist confesses, does not deny, but confesses emphatically that this is not what he is. Me? No, I'm not the light, nor Elijah, nor the prophet, and certainly not the Messiah. Understandably, the priests and the Levites needed to return to the Pharisees with an answer and so ask, well, who are you? What do you say about yourself? In response, John does not try and answer in his own words. He doesn't have to. That's already been done centuries before him. He quotes fellow prophet Isaiah and says, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. He is not the word. He is the voice, the mouthpiece. Just as you cannot play the clarinet or saxophone without a reed, nor the trumpet or trombone without a mouthpiece. We couldn't have Jesus appearing without first cousin John paving the way, baptizing, preparing, warning. John's role is to ensure all ears are open for when the word appears and speaks. Such is his humility that his identity is entirely defined with respect to another. There is nothing noteworthy or indeed he says worthy about John nor in any one of us in relation to the one who is to come in a few short weeks now. If you had to choose a scripture verse to best describe you, which, I wonder, would you choose? Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. Give thanks to his holy name. We rejoice, O Lord, in your liberation. May your church proclaim your freedom and release. Set us free from all that holds us back from proclaiming your glory. We rejoice, O Lord, in your justice. Guide the nations in ways that enable all people to sing for joy. Restore your balance in trade and cohesive living. We rejoice, O Lord, in your favour. Pour out your grace on our communities that they may abound in your love. Bless our homes and those closest to us with whom we delight in your praise. We rejoice, O Lord, without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances, 
we may hold fast through whatever trials may beset us. God of peace, sanctify and keep us in your faithfulness. We rejoice, O Lord, in your eternal mercy. Hold dear to yourself all who have passed from glory to glory. Count us acceptable in your sight at your coming again. Amen. We bless you, High King of all creation, together with our souls and bodies, and only through your grace and goodness, we have bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become our spiritual food and drink. As this bread was once scattered, and then gathered and made one, so may your church be gathered into your kingdom. Glory to you, O God, forever. Wisdom has built her house. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. Glory to you, O God, forever. We lift up our hearts and lift them to God alone. We lift up our heads and lift them to God alone. We lift up our voices and lift them to God alone. High King of the universe, who sustains the world, who brought forth the earth. You breathe wisdom into all your creation till we reflect your threefold friendship. In our pain and sorrow, we cry out to you. Tender lamb slain before the world began, perfect sacrifice for our sins. Grant that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood, who on the night he was betrayed took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. You, who put the beam into the sun and moon, take all this and transform it into the deep, rich wine of everlasting life. In our pain and sorrow, we cry out to you. After supper, he took the cup, gave you thanks, and said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord, and it is to be made ready for those who love him and want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time, you who try to follow and you who feel they have failed. Come, not because I invite you, it is our Lord, and it is his will that those who want him should meet him here. We give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts. Kindle us in the fire of your spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love. And in this time of Advent, Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, that's all from us for now. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Killian and Leanne, for the prayers and the readings. Sending much love and every blessing to you all. For now, goodbye.